Most often, the principal benefit of having a revocable living trust is probate avoidance. A living trust is an agreement, and it's an arrangement between somebody who creates a document and the trustee. It can be the same person, and often is, where a client appoints themselves as the trustee. What the trust says is that they can use whatever is in the trust, whatever assets are titled in the trust for their own benefit, and that money is there to use for their general welfare, for their education, for their general support. When they pass away, it becomes a will substitute, and that's why living trusts are so popular. A living trust is also important in incapacity planning. Sometimes I see a client with 12 different bank accounts from different banks and having somebody manage those accounts for her under a durable power of attorney can be cumbersome. And so when you have a revocable living trust and you retitle those accounts, the trustee has legal title to all of those accounts. And they're not going to run into the obstacles that a power of attorney may. A living trust is not appropriate for everybody. It's not a one size fits all. And for some people, when they walk in the door and they have an idea that they want a revocable living trust, I talk them out of it. And I tell them, well, a will is more appropriate in your circumstance. And when we draft wills, uh, we have the ongoing probate jurisdiction and we have the ongoing probate administration and we handle that as well. And we have paralegals in our office who are, uh, have the expertise and the knowledge and the ability to be able to help our clients and they're going to talk to you about that. Together the, the attorneys and I will put together a plan of coverage that will assist our clients to protect their assets, preserve a legacy for their children's future, and to give them peace of mind going into their elder years. I've been working in trust and estate administration for 25 years. I help our clients navigate the probate process from beginning to end, including filing all these state and federal estate tax returns. But more than the numbers, we understand that when a loved one dies, the last thing a family wants to deal with is the probate paperwork. And you don't have to. That's what we're for. I'll make the probate process as easy as possible for you and your loved ones by filing all of the documents necessary to complete the administration of the matter. My ultimate goal is to help you and your family during this very difficult time. Think of us as a law firm not only for you, but for your entire family. Our largest practice area is asset protection for long-term care. As elder law attorneys, this is what we do. We sit with families, we look at what they have in assets, and we find ways to protect those assets for their children. Most often, this involves making gifts, making gifts to their children, and protecting the assets for their family. When you do this, you have to wait out a five-year period. After the five-year period, you've protected whatever assets, whether it be the home, bank accounts, brokerage accounts, you've protected those assets for your family, for your children. Let me talk to you about the Medicaid rules for married couples. And it's going to be a little different whether it's crisis mode where someone's in a nursing home already, one of the spouses, or if it's pre-planning. In either case, everything will be dependent upon your particular facts, your family structure and your financial structure. What we need to do to serve you best is to take all of those facts, put them in a blender, mix it together, and see what that mix looks like. What might have happened in your friend's situation, if you had a parent or neighbor, or a brother or sister or relative who went through the Medicaid process, it's going to be very different probably than what the solution is for your situation because it's uniquely tailored. Now the general rules for married couples, if there's one spouse in a nursing home, the other spouse in the community is allowed to have a house of any value, a car, and not more than $113,000 worth of money or investments, and a certain basic monthly income of $1,850, give or take. And there's ways to make that a little higher if the facts are right. Those are the basic rules. It doesn't allow for a lot, but there's ways to improve upon that. Critical point, because of rule changes that took place in 2006, is that you give us an opportunity to do pre-planning so we can protect for you and your family as much as possible. That's our commitment to you. I'm Liz Walsh. I'm one of the Medicaid paralegals here at the firm. I have a master's degree in psychology and I've worked in social services for 12 years prior to joining the firm. I work closely with clients and their families in completing applications for public benefits. Medicaid applications can be overwhelming and require an extensive paper chase. It's my job to take care of this. I stay in constant contact with the clients from the start of the process to the end. I work one-on-one -on -one 
with the state agency to compile all the documents needed to complete the Medicaid application so our clients don't have to. And above all, I never lose sight of the emotional toll of having a spouse or parent in a nursing home and I treat every client in a caring manner and with the utmost respect. We're not only a law firm for you, we're a law firm for your entire family.